So in this video I'd like to describe a few more examples of constructing the stoichiometry matrix. Let's consider for example the following uh, branch system. So I have a simple branch followed by another simple branch. So I have two species S1 and S2 and I have five reactions which I'm going to label as follows. like so. And I can write down the M, which is the number of species, is 2, S1 and S2. And N, the number of reactions, is 5. So I need a two-row matrix. If I want to describe this using a stoich stoichiometry matrix, I need a two rows and five columns. So I'm going to label the rows here. I'm not going to bother putting in the the brackets to indicate the matrix. I'm just going to put the rows and columns uh, labels. So these are the column labels V1, V2, V3, V4 and V5. So now we have to look at what are the stoichiometric coefficients on this network. I'm going to assume unity coefficients for each step and each species. So the those, those reactions that produce a species, those species will have a stoichiometric coefficient of plus 1, so that includes this one, V1 and S2, and V3 and S2. All the remainder will have, a sto will have a stoichiometric coefficient of minus 1. So it's minus 1 here, minus 1 there, minus 1, minus 1. Okay. Now from that information I can now fill in this uh, stoichiometric matrix. So for V1, V1 only involves S2 with a stoichiometric matrix of 1 doesn't involve S2, so there's zero there. V2, again, only involves S1, but this time with a stoichiometric matrix of minus 1. So it's there, and nothing in S2. V3 involves uh, two stoichiometric coefficients, a minus 1 on S1 and a plus 1 on S2. And finally, V4 and V5, they both have the same, same pattern. They don't involve S2. S1 at all, but S2 has stoichiometric coverage of minus 1 and minus 1. And that's the stoichiometry matrix for that model. Now how about doing something a little bit more uh, complicated? Let's try uh, this system. So I'm going to write this system out as a, as a scheme like this. A plus X is transformed into 2X x plus y is transformed into 1z, and 1z is transformed into y plus b. So this is a, if you're if you're British, this is a z. If you're American, this is a z. So now let's um, label these reactions: v1, v2, and v3. So as before, I can say that n, which is the number of reactions, is three. But how many species do we have? We have one, two. 3, 4, and 5. So M is 5. So we need 5 rows and 3 columns. So let me put that in there. I'm going I'm to label all these, all the rows. A, X, Y, Z, or Z, and B. Then I will label the columns up here. V1, V2, V3. Okay. Now let's put in the stoichiome uh, stoichiometric coefficients. So A is consumed one molecule at a time, so that has a stoichiometric coefficient of minus 1. X minus 1 here, Y minus 1 here, Z also minus 1 there. Z here is plus 1, Y here is plus 1, B is plus 1. So the first reaction is slightly different. We have x on both sides of the equation. So here we just subtract the stoichiometric amount of the product from the stoichiometric amount of the reactant. And that gives us 1. So that's plus 1. So now we can fill in the stoichiometry matrix. So A on V1 minus 1. X is 1. Y, Z, and B, they have no entries. V2 doesn't involve A, so that's 0, but does involve X and Y with stoichiometric coefficients of minus 1. Also Z is a plus 1 and B has nothing. And the final reaction, 
don't have anything involving a, we don't have anything involving x, we do have a y plus 1, we do have a z minus 1, and we do have a b plus 1. And so there we have our stoichiometric matrix for this system.